What's up, everybody? Welcome to Make Things Tiny. My name is Mick, and today I'm talking to Tom. Tom is the owner of The Riverloft, an awesome tiny house Airbnb located about an hour outside of Manhattan, New York City, based in Connecticut. Tom's going to talk a little bit about their backstory, what what they do, what made them decide to buy the tiny house, what their experience is sort of running it as an Airbnb and being sort of like an Airbnb host for the first time. And then also make sure you watch to the end of the video because Tom's going to give us a tour, so you don't want to miss that. I'm super excited for you guys to learn more about Tom and then also to see uh, his property and see the river loft. So before we get into the video, um, for those of you who are new to the channel, please do take time to subscribe. It helps me out so much. Uh, it helps me continue to grow this fantastic community of people who are interested in learning about all things tiny. And then if you tap the notification bell, you'll find out when I drop new videos and I drop new videos every single week. So let's get into it. Let's talk about this uh, river loft Airbnb and let's get to know Tom. <laughs> I'm here today with Tom McGee. Tom, thank you so much for being on the channel. Um, Tom is the owner of the Riverloft, which is a fantastic Airbnb located outside of New York City. Um, if you don't mind, Tom, just to start out, just telling us a little bit about yourself, and then we can go from there. Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Tom McGee, and uh, I am a full-time online uh, health coach. That's my full-time business, but I also run the Riverloft, which I'm unfortunately not at now. I rented out part-time on Airbnb, so someone's actually staying there but uh those are the two main things i do for work and um yeah those are my passions too it's awesome it's really cool that you're able to do like both i know that that's probably like keeps it really interesting um do you mind just sort of like telling us what made you decide to buy the river, river loft and like tell us a little bit about the river loft too definitely so the river loft was something i purchased actually it was last year this time like almost to the day so i was um working full-time in the city uh, and uh, i always wanted to buy an investment property but never was really like super in the market like looking around it was kind of just like a pipe dream uh and actually the town i grew up in um someone we knew she uh was a local architect and she actually went through a divorce and she built this like tiny home that's it's about maybe like between 500 600 square feet and she built it as kind of like her forever home and you know lo and behold a couple years later she found a new partner and she needed something a little bit bigger so she was willing to sell it and my mom was a real estate agent so when she told my mom she asked my mom to list it I, my mom was immediately like i think my son would love this so it was one of those things where i had in the back of my mind i wanted to get something but it kind of just fell in my lap and i love the fact that it was just like in the middle of nature. It was a small home that this architect thought of so many little details. And hopefully we can, I'll do like a tour later and you can see all the things that I'm talking about, but it's just been a pleasure. And it's just it's been a wild ride this year, uh, learning the ins and outs of owning the home. That's awesome. That's really cool that it sort of like happened that way. It's a really cool coincidence. What do you feel is like the biggest thing you've learned or like maybe like one of the bigger like challenges, things you weren't really like anticipating sort of like jumping into being a, and like a, not only like a homeowner and a tiny house owner, but also like doing the Airbnb part too. Yeah. So, oh, there's so many lessons to learn. One of the things that I realized is, especially being in Connecticut, there's definitely a season out, seasonality component to owning an Airbnb. So mm -hmm. when we first got the Riverloft, it was in the summer, it was like prime time, and we were off the races. Like, I think we only had probably like three or four days in August that it wasn't rented. So, oh, wow. you know, my confidence was up here. <laughs> and then come the winter, it really slowed down. So with that being said, it's it's kind of just understanding the seasonality components of things like that's very important um, because you don't want to be blowing your money if you think you have all this money coming in. <laughs> right. But what I did was I actually just reinvested in some other amenities. So next winter we have a sauna there. So hopefully that should help and uh, attract new guests in the winter. Um, so that's kind of one thing. And then the second thing I would say is just uh, owning a home is expensive. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I just replaced the AC unit last week. It was uh, 10 years old and it just kind of like crapped out on us. But look, that's, that's kind of the ups and downs. So it's just when you have those good months, you want to make sure that you're saving. And mm -hmm. when you have the opportunity to, to reinvest in your property, to 
you know, add some additional amenities that always help. So those are my kind of two nuggets and I can give you some other more nuggets later, but those are the two that are just most recent top of mind. That makes sense. No, I think to just like thinking about added expenses or like, you know, things that just come up, which you, you know, you wouldn't think about. So that makes sense. And th- I think those are really great pieces of advice. Like if you, for the people that are watching, especially after the, I know like there'll be like a tour as part of this video too, but in general, for the people that are watching, you know, I know some of them are interested in getting tiny houses, doing the Airbnb bit. Do you feel like there's any sort of like, you know, main piece of advice you would give to someone who's looking at this video and they're thinking like, I totally want to do this. Like it looks like a fun, like be like a fun ride. Yeah. So I would definitely say that like, if you want to get into owning your own kind of like tiny home, Mm -hmm. you probably want to buy something that you also wouldn't mind living there. And Mm -hmm. the reason I say that is I don't really look at the river loft as just an investment. And I think of it more as like, even if it wasn't rented, like I just love the property. I love being there myself. And it is a bonus that it can be an Airbnb um, Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of uh, headaches that go with owning a property. I think people think Airbnb is like 100% passive, not 100% passive, but it's, but there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes to making a good Airbnb experience too. You know, I'm lucky I have, uh, you know, some help with, you know, the property management and things like that. Uh, My parents helped me out a lot. So, um, you know, it's, it's been good, but it's not like a cash cow. It's more of like mm-hmm. a passion project for me. And um, I think the other thing, like I said, is just the, just being prepared for if, with, especially with Airbnb, it's like you can have really good months, you can have slower months. So it's just understanding all those kind of like nuanced things. But the last part is really just about uh, making sure people have a good experience when they visit, um, yeah. you know, like leaving like, um, if you can leave like flowers or, you know, cookies or something like that, those small things, I, I think it really does make a difference. Mm-hmm. I think that's a really good point, especially what you're talking about with like, pick a place that you would want to live in yourself, because then I think you're going to approach it differently, even if it is an investment, if it's like something that you really value, like you love the architecture, you love the design, like you, you would live there too. I think you're going to treat it very differently than if it's just like a place that you wouldn't stay in. That's just like, you're hoping to make money off of. And I would say that like, I've stayed in quite a few Airbnbs and like, I do remember the ones where I felt like it was more of an at-home experience versus the ones where it just kind of felt like a place to sleep, you know, a place to crash, a place to cook your meals and you don't stay there very often. So those little touches definitely make a huge difference. Yeah. And look, I, I would love to, like, if, even if it wasn't, uh, if, even if I took it off Airbnb at some point, mm-hmm. like I would still love to just be there myself. And I yeah. try to be there as often as I can, because it really is, a, a I especially me being in the city after like 30 days of being here, I get a little stir crazy. <laughs> <laughs> in a small apartment that I'm in. Uh so being able to just escape in nature just it just takes like a weight off my shoulders. Mm-hmm. And I think that's uh that's another thing that again I really like the fact that like I can spend a lot of time in there. Um mm-hmm. it just yeah, I just have to be flexible with the days. That's the only thing. Yeah, that makes sense. And it makes sense to have like an escape too if you live in a, a city. Like I lived in cities for like over a decade and it would have been really cool to get away because you just, it's loud and you don't see trees in the same way. And like, you're not really encouraged to slow down. So I think that makes a lot of sense. So if anyone uh, wants to, wants to stay at the river loft, like um, how would they, what's the best way for them to sort of get in touch with you to book it? Like that sort of thing. So I would love for anyone that's out here that's interested is to follow my Instagram page. It's uh, it's just at the river loft. I mm-hmm. think that there's a uh, period after the, uh, but yeah, that's my Instagram account. I post a lot of updates there, new content video pieces there. And uh, if anyone's also in the area, I'm trying to do like some meet and greet type of events there, but that's something Ooh. that's going to be more down the line. But uh, anyways, yeah, that's where you can find me at Instagram. That's awesome. That's really cool that you want to do like meet and greets. Like I feel like um, I would have loved to have meet the people that were hosting, like the the places I've stayed at. I feel like that changes things where you can put like, you know, a name to a face and like you can really get to understand sort of like your intention behind the project and behind the, the Airbnb too. So I feel like that will probably go over really well. Yeah, I'm excited. So I, because I have a background in, in health and fitness and nutrition, I, there's some hiking trails around there too. So like we could have uh, 
you know, small day, you know, meetups where we could kind of go through like some trail trail runs or, or just, you know, similar things like that. I think it would just be a good experience to also build community because uh, mm -hmm. I think that's also important. You know, it's great to, you know, have these escapes, but it's also good to connect with like-minded people as well. Yeah, for sure. No, that's awesome. I haven't really heard of anyone doing that. So I feel like that's a really cool way to incorporate people into the experience and, you know, definitely will get people excited about it too, which is, which is really great. It's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Tom. I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking time to chat with me. I'm excited to to see the river loft and I know people will be really excited to just learn more about you and then, and see the tour as well too. And links to everything that you're doing will be in the video description as well. So I'm excited for people to reach out to you and like, go check it out, you know, especially people that are already on the East coast or, you know, want to do like a summer vacation or, you know, even go somewhere in the winter. I feel like the East coast is really beautiful in the winter time too. It sounds like a cool place to go all year round. So thank you. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, even in the winter, you know, that's the thing is we we have, um, you know, uh, well, you'll see it on the tour. <laughs> I'll leave it for that. But there's a lot of there's a lot of things that I think are even nice in the winter too that people will enjoy, especially the summer yeah. now that we have it there. Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, I saw the I saw the Instagram reel for that when we were putting that together. So I'm excited to see what that looks like. I feel like that that's a cool experience too. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome to the River Loft. This is my 550 square foot tiny home in Connecticut, about an hour outside New York City. I'm gonna give you a full survey of the property and show you all the details. I think this property is gonna blow your mind, so come on with me, let's go. The Riverloft was built in 2015 by a local architect and she thought of everything. And the first thing you may notice when you walk in here is it feels a lot larger than 550 square feet. And that's because of the tall ceilings that she thought of and also the open air concept with the garage door. But what I think you're really gonna find interesting is all the appliances and the details that she thought of. So come with me and make sure you stick around to the very end. Setting up the Murphy bed is simple. The first thing we're gonna do is just move all the cushions and then we're gonna slide the end of the couch towards the middle so when the Murphy bed comes down, it's secure. Also hidden in the cabinet are the linens and two extra lamps for extra light at night. Even though this is a small house, the kitchen is fully set up. We have everything you can think of from an oven, microwave, full fridge. We even maximize our space by having a cutting board that's in the wall. And even our coffee nook is hidden and our toaster. So we're, everything here, we're just trying to maximize space. But next, I wanna show you the hidden bathtub. I think you're gonna find this really interesting. Side note, there's radiant heat throughout the entire loft. And when you walk in the bathroom, you'll immediately see a custom concrete sink, a rain shower, and a small hatch that can open up into a large hidden bathtub. Now that you got the full tour of the downstairs, we're gonna go upstairs on the library ladder and I'm gonna show you my private workstation. This is where I spend most of the day. All we need to do is pull out our chair, open up the cabinets, and there's gonna be two small sticks that we're gonna slide through the rings, and then we're slowly gonna bring the desk down. Now that you've seen the interior, let's go outside. Favorite part about the river loft is not inside, it's actually outside. So the river loft sits on over two and a half acres of private forested land. And as you can see, there's hundreds of different types of wildflowers and fruit trees to help you really get back in touch with nature. Other thing about the river loft is we have tons of different private trails. So whether you're just trying to go on a nice nature walk or you're trying to actually go outside and do some trail running like I like to do, we have it all here. And one of my most recent investments is this four person barrel sauna. I love this. This is something that gets up to like 185, almost 190 degrees. That's plenty hot for me. Uh, I haven't used it in the winter yet, but I'm really looking forward to that. But when you get out of this bad boy, one of the best things to do is jump straight into the shower. So we have this outdoor shower we just installed and this does hot and cold, but getting that cold water on you after the steam is the best feeling in the world. And when you walk down here, we actually have a direct path that's private that goes to the river. So in the summer, I like to spend a lot of time out here, especially after my trail runs to just jump in, cool down, make fires, s'mores, that type of thing. So I'm gonna show you that in just a sec. 
So this is the perfect spot in my opinion to make some s'mores or just campfire and just relax and chill. And again, I wanna show you the river now. This is the spot where I go to cool down and jump in every once in a while. And this is part of the reservoir. We have some tubes too if you wanna jump in or float around and not have to actually get your full body in. If you enjoy the tour, make sure to give us a follow and book a trip with that special someone. All right, so that's my conversation with Tom. I appreciate Tom taking the time to talk to us about their experience, sort of like how they were able to uh, sort of like find the river loft and how that kind of fell into their lap a bit um, and just their experience running it and their background as a, and their current experience as a fitness coach, I mean like online fitness coaching too. So, and the tour, I was really appreciate them taking the time to walk us through everything. It's like a really beautiful sort of unique space and you can just sort of like see all the architectural details and like those really important like touches they put on the, like the designer put on the, the tiny house as well too so i'm excited for you guys to learn more and check everything out so please do take the time to check out tom's instagram for the river loft check out tom's um instagram for the health coaching too as well like maybe some of you are interested in uh getting some more like nutrition and fitness sort of like coaching and help in that area too so links to everything that tom's doing will be in the uh video description here and then also information for booking the river loft too so hopefully you guys can go and check it out um as well so thank you again tom and if you're new to the channel please do take time subscribe if you tap the notification bell you find out when i drop new videos i drop new videos every single week i'll keep bringing you guys more um really fun content more uh, tiny house communities more tours meeting new people but i always want to know what you guys want to see so please take the time to drop a comment let me know if there's anyone you think it would be great for me to interview on the channel if you have any ideas for videos you want to see you can always send me an email at makethingstiny at gmail.com as well and as always don't forget to think tiny i'll see you guys in the next one mm -hmm.